Alhamdulillah, till 2007, I started Dawah in 1988, started the organization in 1991, in February, IRF. In the span of 25 years, from 88 to 2007, that was 20 years initially, there was never any, any controversy about me. And I always had a philosophy that if you're doing something on the huck, there's bound to be obstacles. But for me, for the first 20 years, there was no obstacles. No controversy. MashaAllah, in my following, Hanafi, Shafi, Hanbali, Maliki, all types of people, Muslims coming, and non-Muslims coming, and no problem at all whatsoever, until when we had the first peace conference 2007. You know, when the banner became bigger. And a question was asked to me regarding Yazid. May Allah have mercy. And I said, may Allah have mercy on him. When I said that, in the answer, I won't go to the details, may Allah have mercy on him, I said to Yazid, conference went very fine. Few days later from Pakistan, the Shias of Pakistan, no, oh, how did he say it? Yazid, Rahimullah, may Allah have mercy, big controversy. Before that, Shias used to call me to give talks because I was on compared to religion. That was the first controversy. I stuck and I gave references from all the scriptures and everything. Second controversy that happened was in 2008 when we did the Peace Conference Urdu, when we called Urdu speakers from different groups, from different sects, on the same platform, and they tried to stop the conference. And that was a time in my life when I thought, the earth is taken away from my feet. Such a big conference, it will be stopped. It was a small problem that time, but that time I thought it was a big problem. What to do? I went to my cabin, prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next day, the home minister interferes, his son, being a Hindu, he comes and touches my feet. I said, this is not allowed. And the conference goes on, to cut the story short. Third controversy in 2010. In 2010, I had been to UK in 2009. And in UK, when I went in 2009, the head of the counterterrorism department, Charles Farr, he approached me and said, you are very popular. We want you to help us to reach those Muslims who we cannot reach. So I told him, I will help you in two conditions. Number one, you should not ask me to do anything against Quran and Sunnah. Number two, I don't want your money. He agreed. The UK government wanted my help to reach those Muslims who they could not reach because of the popularity of Peace TV. In 2010, the government changes. From Labour Party, you have the Conservative. Because the new government comes, Theresa May, at that time she was the Home Secretary, later she became the Prime Minister. She didn't know me. She said, who is the most popular Muslim speaker in UK? They said, Zakir Naik, banned him. We cannot, he has not done anything wrong, banned him. Find something in his speech which he spoke against UK. He hasn't spoken against UK. Find something in his speech which is illegal, nothing illegal. Okay, go to CIA, ask them. CIA said, we have nothing against Dr. Zakir Naik. I said, yet I want to ban him. He said, if you ban him, he will go to the court. She said, I will handle the judges. And she excluded me. The only country officially to exclude me in 2010 was Theresa May. Three weeks she came to power. She didn't know me, but because I was a popular Muslim, then I realized there are two problems, major problems in Dawah. Number one, amongst the Muslim, there are sects who fight against each other. Biggest problem. Number two, in the political arena, the politician non-Muslim, to get his vote bank, he will attack the Muslim dais. So these two are the major problems for Dawah. Number one is Muslims having sex among themselves. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 103, wa la Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. If we Muslims are united, inshallah, no one can interfere with us. And I had a formula to unite the Muslims, but time is short. I cannot 
touch on that. So I was shocked. The head of the counterterrorism department wants my help, and now they want to ban me. So they ban me, and my lawyer say, "Oh, we'll fight the case. We'll win 99.9 percent." .9%. One of my fans, we had the best of lawyer. He tells me that we will have the best of lawyer, but we will not win. We will lose. We spent more than a million pound only in fighting the government. We lost the case, but we won the battle. Our organization was safe, and we went to Supreme Court. We went. To the European Court, that was the first experience of political interference. In 2012, one of my staff he uploaded a video without checking on my Facebook, in which it was my speech but altered. There was laughter in between, so it gave a wrong picture. That was towards the end of 2012, and I was supposed to come for a lecture tour to Malaysia. It was Ganesh Chaturthi, just maybe a month before that, and there was no problem in India. But some Hindus from Malaysia they took that clip and made it viral and started complaining, and they told people in India. So first time any non-Muslim objected to my talk was in 2012. Why? In 2007 it was Muslim because from Pakistan she has complained. In 2012 it was Hindus from Malaysia, some organisation, they complained. to hindu organization in india and there was big massive protest first time the hindus in india normally love me they respect me they revere me therefore for my talk 25% of the people coming for my talk are non muslims so from 1988 to 2012 there was no problem at all 25 years no problem but some political organization in india took that issue and made a issue out of me and made police complaints first problem in india regarding non muslim 2012 but alhamdulillah allah helped us we continued 